Planet Earth had been destroyed a long time ago, but there was still a glimmer of hope for survivors. The Ark, a mysterious place filled with incredible ancient species, plants, and resources. Survivors were sent down by an unknown force and had no recollection of their past life. All they could do now was survive. I survived 100 days in Ark Fjodir. In this video, you will witness the most incredible Ark playing skills. Nah, I'm just kidding. But nevertheless, this is a perfect opportunity for regular Ark players to have a laugh, I would say. And for those of you new to Ark, join me on this mysterious adventure. By the way, guys, I would love to know what animals and dinosaurs you would like me to tame in another video because there were so many, I couldn't tame them all. So yeah, keep me posted in the comments. When I woke up, I was confused. My ears were ringing and the world around me was so bright, it was blinding. What was this strange metal implant in my arm? I got up, looked around and was shocked to discover I was in the land of the dinosaurs. After spotting a huge lizard or something, I decided to gather resources such as wood, stone, fiber and berries. With the help of a few berries, I was able to tame my first companion on this journey. I named him Billy and he really had a stunning smile. I was then able to craft myself some tools as well as some clothes because yeah, I was completely naked and it was getting a bit chilly. I needed some hide to craft, you know, saddles and beds, etc. So I killed my first dodo. I then spotted this adorable little creature and I had to tame him and I named him Bob. And Bob was very adventurous because yeah, he had to climb over rocks rather than going around for some reason. I placed down a campfire and my sleeping bag and I spent the night there with the lads. On day two, I continued on my way and I quickly realized that Bob wasn't the fastest of beasts. At one point, a Bronto was walking right next to me and the ground all around me would shake like crazy. I spotted a turtle far away in the sea and I decided to kill it because it gave carotene which would be really important for my future crafts. I also had a go at some poor innocent dodos that hadn't done anything. I then spotted this bluebird that seemed, you know, quite friendly and it just attacked me. So I attempted to kill it and my spear broke. So Bob started running after it. I got so scared. I was really low on health and thankfully when the night came, I managed to survive and killed it. And guess what? I did all that and a terror bird attacked me and killed me. Yay. <laughs> I'm laughing, but I'm actually crying inside. On day three, I spawned in a completely new place and I was really scared to try and go back, you know, to Billy and Bob because I was sure they had been killed by the terror bird. So yeah, sadly, I was alone once again. Oh, and I also promised myself never to stay out at night in the dark without a house. So of course, first thing I did was build a house. Well, if we can call it a house. I also crafted myself a bed like that. If ever I die, I can respawn at the bed. I was feeling quite lonely and this is not normal for Ark. I mean, Ark is all about taming and, you know, making friends with the animals. That is exactly why I was slapping this dodo with a bat. Yes, very friendly Tootsie. <laughs> but basically it was to knock the dodo out so that I could give him berries and I named him Dwayne the Rock. I then extended my beautiful looking house to be able to add a forge and in it I could start smelting some metal. I was returning home that afternoon when I spotted a beautiful pterodon with majestic white wings and I knew I wanted to tame him. On day five I was attacking another turtle and basically my bow broke so I had to carefully finish off the work with a spear. And then I think it was karma for hurting all the animals around me. Basically, Dwayne the Rock ended up on the fire and died. Great. 
I was more motivated than ever to try and tame the pterodon, so I knocked him unconscious and gave him some meat. Suddenly, my heart stopped because I spotted a raptor and I knew I had to kill him or else he would come and eat my pterodon. And with my heart pounding at a hundred, I somehow managed. I then noticed a green drop in the forest nearby, so I opened the crate and basically you can get a few items in it. Finally, the pterodon was tamed and I was so happy. And I was even able to put a saddle on him and it was so nice to be able to fly around with him. On day six, we decided to set out to try and find a home. We came across this little camp and it was really, really nice. But first I had to kill off all the raptors and you know, all the dinosaurs that could be a bit mean. <laughs> I decided to name the pterodon Phoenix, not because he was reborn from the ashes, but just because he was really majestic and it fit him well. We spent the night in the empty shack and on the very next day I decided I would start, you know, placing down some large chests and all to be able to store all my stuff as well as a door like that I would be sure nothing would attack me. <laughs> I decided to make the vegetable patch Phoenix enclosure, so I just placed a dino gate and some spikes all around to protect him in case some other dinos came to attack him. I then placed down a fire, a preserving bin to preserve all the meat I'd got, and I also placed a table with a mortar and pestle to be able to make some tranquilizer arrows. On day eight, I continued working hard on protecting the area. So I placed loads of spikes as well as some dino gates so that I would actually be able to go in and out. I was delighted to find a mine entrance and I was able to collect loads of metal that I immediately smelted. On day nine, I admired the shapes of a lovely lady, elephant, rhino, whatever. <laughs> And then I built a cozy fireplace for my home. Phoenix and I set out to have a look at the world around us and we came across this sort of castle or something built in the rock, which was pretty cool. And then I spotted my first T-Rex. I didn't go too close. And we also looted plenty of crates and there's actually when I found some crystals. So I gathered them because I knew I would need them at one point. We then return home to safety and I even placed down a bed and named it Tootsie Savior because that's exactly what it would be. On day 10, I wanted to tame a Parasaur and I looked around to find one that had a low level because they are way quicker to tame. And there we had it, meet George. As George was very low level, I really had to get home as quickly as possible. And I made sure to kill off, you know, all the animals that tried attacking him. And of course, that's when I came across a Carno, a big one. And I thought he hadn't seen me, but he did. And he came straight to attack us. So I attempted to defend George and failed miserably. But at least I had avenged his death and I will always have a place for him in my heart. I went back and found a higher level Parasaur and I actually named her Georgina in memory of poor George that really hadn't lived very long. And trust me, this time around I rushed and hoped that there wouldn't be a Carno again. I also tamed a Dodo and named her Patricia. I upgraded my armor to metal and then I was quite thirsty so I went down to a river to have a drink. In the afternoon, I spotted a raptor attacking a parasaur, so I thought it was the perfect moment to try and tame it, and I decided to name her Fang. I then let Fang kill off this turtle and another raptor, like that she would get some XP. It's really sweet because when I upgraded her level, she did some adorable noises. I had a fun little run around with Fang, and then it was time for more exploring with Phoenix. I spotted something peculiar in the water, but it was getting dark very quickly and actually we almost got lost when we were getting home. To examine the thing in question, I had to lead away a couple of Allosauruses because I didn't feel like getting eaten today, like maybe another day, we'll see. Once that was done, I jumped onto a raft I'd made 
and went to see and it was actually a giant beaver den but I couldn't access any inventory so it was completely useless. Guess what, I'm just so smart and so I took a break and then I forgot to record day 13, great. Anyway it was a very shameful day because I was just trying to destroy the beaver den and it was completely useless so no harm done. <laughs> On day 14, I did manage to trap an Argentavis. I'm so mad that I couldn't show you the footage. Well done, Tootsie. But don't worry, I'll tame another one later on. When the Argentavis woke up, I named him Thudder. It was meant to be Thunder, but yeah. Clearly, I was really not thinking straight at that moment. Finally, my brain woke up and I named him Thunder. And I even crafted him a saddle. One of the reasons I tamed an Argentavis is because they could carry other animals so I had a try with Patricia and I'm sure Patricia found it very weird not being a flightless bird for once. I set off with Phoenix and Thunder because basically I wanted to find some beavers so that they would make a beaver den and I would get cementing paste, I don't know how that would work. But I spotted this Alpha Carno by the lake, tried attacking him and it was the worst idea ever because Phoenix had no stamina left meaning he couldn't fly away and I made him go over water which dismounted me and thankfully Phoenix was quite powerful because he managed to kill the Carno and somehow I didn't die. I mean, thank you Phoenix. That's when I realized that Thunder was nowhere to be found so I retraced my steps and there he was. And I knew I really had to upgrade his speed. I then put Phoenix on the raft and we had a look around but sadly we didn't find any beavers. On day 16, I spotted some shiny little things at the bottom of a lake and they were actually pearls and I picked them up not knowing what their use was so if you know please tell me in the comments. And finally, finally I got lucky. I found a beaver dam, not a den, and I could loot the cementing paste. Phoenix then flew home, well I mean pooped home. That afternoon I thought I was so smart once again. And I tried getting some honey from a beehive and look how it turned out. Well done Tootsie. With the help of Phoenix, we went to recover all my stuff from my body that was just lying there. On day 17, I dragged my body around for a laugh. I mean, everybody does that, don't they? And then I set out to find another raptor to tame because honestly, my end goal would be to have a raptor army to take over the world, you know? Although I'm not sure Phoenix really agreed with my ambitions because he killed the second raptor I wanted to tame. I then came across the triplets. So I was able to knock unconscious the first one, but then the two other ones arrived at the same time. Thankfully, it all went okay, and I named them Scratch, Munch, and Crunch. Very original names. On day 18, I collected a bunch of different resources and stored them in a chest. And then I decided to make my permanent base right up this cliff. I did get attacked by a raptor, but I punched it to death. I don't know why I forgot to use my spear. And I placed some wooden spikes everywhere. On day 19, I placed a behemoth gate at the entrance of my base and a smaller dinosaur gate at the back. At one point, I noticed this sort of weird stone thing and I thought it would be a nest, but it was actually a water vein, so it was really practical. I also decided to start working on the dinosaur enclosure. I wanted to make a proper one this time, like not just spikes everywhere, so I used some railings. Day 21 was quite funny because I had to pick up all my animals to bring them up to the new base. And I actually almost forgot Patricia. I'm so sorry, Patricia. So that Patricia would forgive me, I actually got her some friends. I named one Paul, the other Pam, and the last was Dodo because I forgot about him. Georgina helped me get rid of some bushes and then I started building the foundations of my house. I placed down the essentials such as a bed, a forge, a smithy, etc, etc. I also placed down a table with a mortar and pestle to be able to make some narcotics. The real building then started. Keep in mind, I do not know how to build an ark. I'm just terrible. Well, actually, no need to keep it in mind because you can just see it. I wanted to place some pillars to give a bit more structure to the house and it was fine on one side, but the other side, I just couldn't place a pillar. It just didn't let me. So yeah, I had an asymmetrical house. I had placed all the important stuff on the very far side of the house, which meant that I had to do this weird sort of lower roof on one side of the house, but I guess the house is ugly anyway, so doesn't matter much. 
On day 26, I bought my miniature raptor army out with me to get a bit of wood, and all that did is I lost one of my raptors, yes. Crunch had fallen down a slope and couldn't get back up, so I had to get thunder to get him out. And therefore, the next day, I built a high fence on each side so that it wouldn't happen again. I know the fence doesn't really look very good, but as we all say, security before style. Tootsie, nobody says that actually. I then got into a fist fight at the bar, uh, the mountain, and I was also able to collect some crystal and some obsidian. Don't worry, it doesn't take eight seconds to mine in this game. I then went back to rob and completely destroy the beaver dam. I then found a sort of strange opening in the rock, and then suddenly something knocked me off Phoenix and gave me a yellow swirl in my vision. And it was actually a ninja bird. On day 30, I returned to this strange place because I'd seen a horse there and I wanted to tame it and I knocked it unconscious and I couldn't access the inventory because that's not how you tame horses. And while doing so, I fell off a cliff and died. I accidentally respawned on a random beach, so I decided to kindly say hello to a friendly neighborhood megalodon. And he must have been really friendly because I woke up in my bed again. That night, I went back to get my stuff, as well as Phoenix. On day 31, I don't know, I was hopeful, so I decided to go back to where I'd lost Billy and Bob. And guess who was waiting for me alive and well? Billy and Bob. I decided to bring back Bob first because he was the smallest, and after attempting to tame an unconscious horse, super smart, I went back to get Billy. On day 32, I finally understood you can only tame a conscious horse in the wild, so I released him and he jumped off a cliff, somehow survived, so I brought him back up with thunder. So basically, it's written in the bottom right that you have to feed the horse by pressing E, something I clearly didn't read, obviously. Okay, this part doesn't even need a commentary. On day 33, I managed to tame this monkey, and honestly, it is the only thing I managed to tame, clearly. And then guess what? I think two neurons connected, because I finally saw that you had to press E. And suddenly, the taming wasn't so difficult after all. I decided to name the horse Dash because he was quite quick, unlike my common sense. I was still missing half my house, so I decided to finish it once and for all. On day 35, I spent the day collecting important resources like metal, crystal, and obsidian. The next day, I put a sign in front of my house saying Tootsie's Cozy Shack, but honestly, I couldn't disagree more. On day 37, I was able to place a second sign, and this one was a little bit more accurate. On day 38, it was feeding time for the raptors, so we all went out and killed as many dinos as possible. And that's when I realized that I really wanted to tame a Brontosaurus. So on day 39, I came back with Phoenix and trapped this lovely Bronto in my homemade enclosure. I accidentally got hit by its tail, and guess what Phoenix decided to do? He decided to completely obliterate him. To be honest, I was super mad because I had asked him a million times to stop. For a change of scenery, we headed towards the deadly volcano island. I managed to collect a bit of oil when suddenly a giga roared so loud it freaked me out and I left the island forever. On day 40, I collected the loot from a crate and then when I returned home, I crafted a fabricator because I needed some polymer to make a cryopod. What's a cryopod, you may ask? It's actually a little ball in which you can transport dinosaurs. You can only craft them in specific places, for example the obelisk, and that is where I went. Once I traveled the whole way, I realized I was missing the polymer, so I had to go back home and come back, and finally I had that mighty cryopod. I also came across this rune, so I was able to level up myself as well as Phoenix. On day 41, I had a second go at taming a Bronto, and guess what? He got loose from my clearly terrible enclosure. And then I continued trying to knock him out, and he jumped off the cliff. After this mega failure, I continued on my way with the pack, and we came across this lovely little raptor. I tamed him and named him hello, may I eat you, because that is exactly the last thing his victims would hear. From days 42 to 43, I collected plenty of resources with the help of Thunder as well as Georgina. 
On day 44, I went out with the tiny raptor army, and at one point I came across this stunning looking triceratops, and I tried to knock it out, but the raptors thought it meant attack, so yeah. On day 45, I had yet another try at taming a Bronto. So I started tranking one, and basically I think they were like a mating pair, and the second one came running after. I actually got really lucky because the green one that wasn't trapped was really low level, so I managed to knock him out fairly quickly. I kind of got a confidence boost from knocking out the Bronto, and I decided to knock out a bumpy head guy, and that's how it went. On day 45, the Bronto finally was tamed and I decided to bring him back home. I went for a little walk with my horse and I actually realized that Scratch had gotten stuck in a rock. I then tamed the slowest dinosaur there ever was. On day 47, I let the Bronto out of the cryopod, he really needed to poop, and I named him Barry. While I was waiting for the slowest dinosaur ever, I actually had time to tame a Triceratops. And once I got the dinosaur back, two days later, I decided the perfect name would be Ferrari. On day 48, I made a saddle for Ferrari, Bernadette the Triceratops, and of course, Barry. And can someone tell me how to prevent taking so much damage when jumping off a Bronto? That night, I went back to find the other Bronto that was still stuck in the enclosure, and I actually decided to trap a Stegosaurus, and he just walked into the trap, so that was super easy. On day 49, I also finally managed to knock out the French flag Bronto, and while I was waiting to tame it, I decided to try and tame another bumpy head guy, and this time I was very careful, and I managed. I bought this Stego and Bumpy back to the house, and then I returned to the French flag Bronto and decided to name him French Joe. I then decided to make some little parking spaces for my dinos. After all, I did have a rhino called Ferrari, so why not? On day 51, I spent the entire day collecting resources with the help of Steve as well as Thunder. On day 52, I wanted to tame this sort of round dino because it collects so much stone and I managed to knock him out, give him berries, and then I tried collecting some more berries and I accidentally hit it and killed it. That's what I call skills. Part four. Did I feel like an idiot afterwards? I sure did. I was lucky enough to find another one the next day and this time I was very careful when taming it. When I let him out of the cryopod, I realized he had something called cryosickness, so I had to give him stim berries, which basically reduced torpidity. On day 54, I decided to name my little guy Bailey, and honestly, he was so efficient to collect stone like I had loads. And some of you might have been wondering why I was collecting so many resources. Basically, I was fed up of my ugly house I wanted to give it a little glow up even though it wouldn't be incredible because my skills are still terrible. So I started off by placing some pillars to be able to extend the roof and then I added some tables and some chairs to pretend I actually had some friends. I also decided to make a huge table with basically a normal table in the middle and a bunch of chests all around. I then decided to make a kitchen with a few preserving bins and I even put the smithy there, I don't really know why. On day 58 I placed down some war drums and by the way guys, if you've been wondering who the drummer is in Nirvana, well here's your answer, obviously. So yeah, by day 59 the house was already looking much better and I also practiced my drumming skills because that is so important. On day 60, I wanted to, you know, start farming and all, so I built a greenhouse. I quickly ran out of resources to build the glass, so I had to collect some more crystals, and there we had it. And now, the trouble began. I was hoping I could get my water for the greenhouse out of the water vein that was right next to it. But guess what, you cannot get any water from it, so I had to look around if there was any water nearby, and no, it was ages away. I put down something to collect rainwater, and then I went off to try and find some dung beetles to make fertilizer. Once I found the dung beetles, I realized you can only tame them with some poop, so I went down to a beach to tame a dodo, and I named him Poop Maker 2.0. 
That night I got the scariest attack ever. I couldn't see what was happening. It was terrifying. On day 64, I bought back the beetles to the house and gave them plenty of poop. I then went down to a lake and realized that I could get some water there, but honestly I didn't want to put some pipes all the way down the mountain. I put some water skins in the water reservoir and suddenly I had water. The only issue was the crop plots weren't irrigated because I placed everything way too high. On day 69, I started placing some pots at the front of the house because I wanted to decorate a bit the front with some plants. Clearly, I did not realize that I would be struggling so much with the water. So plants really need the greenhouse effect to grow, so I put like a mini greenhouse wall right above. On day 72, I set out with Thunder to attack a few dinosaurs, but mainly I wanted to tame a T-Rex. So I found this super easy T-Rex trap on YouTube. And when I made it and I saw the T-Rex coming, I was like, okay, this trap is not good for me. I'm too much of a noob. And when I finally got the guts to try it out, I realized the T-Rex was attacking some Brontos and wasn't very much alive. I also spotted another T-Rex that went, once again, straight towards a Bronto. On day 74, I realized my crops were not growing and I had to lower down all the pipes. The only problem was, there was no water left. Day 75 was the most stressful but exciting day of the entire video. It was time to tame a T-Rex. So I made him like this little trap with a behemoth gate and then I shot arrows at him hoping he would follow me. Once he was in the trap I had to close the gate and basically to close the gate you have to press E but to dismount an animal you press E as well and basically I wasn't close enough to the door so I fell to my death. There was no time to lose because Thunder was in grave danger. I quickly flew back with Phoenix, lured the T-Rex in the trap and shut the gate. Once I got my stuff back, I shot at the T-Rex until I knocked him out. And then my worst nightmare happened. There was actually another T-Rex right next to my knocked out T-Rex, which meant he could come and kill it anytime so I quickly had to lure him away but the issue was the night came so suddenly I got lost I was so scared just flying through the woods as quickly as possible and thankfully I found him in time on day 76 I bought the T-Rex back home and named him Rex I mean the creativity in this name is just outstanding on day 77 to be honest I felt like the queen of the world I just went out with my T-Rex and my Raptor gang and we killed off every single dino we saw until I spotted this Alpha T-Rex. So he had a low level so I thought it would be okay but it did not go as planned. Basically he managed to kill four of my Raptors. Lovely. So yeah, I was really quite disappointed, but thankfully I actually had the trophy head to prove I had avenged them. From day 79 to 81, I actually had to bring my pipes right down the mountain to the water because I was struggling too much to grow the plants. I'm actually super silly because I was using up a lot of precious resources by making some metal pipes because I could just have made stone ones out of stone and wood, but yeah, I'm an idiot, you know it. Finally, on day 82, the water was flowing and this time it was for good. On day 83, I went out once again with Dash and Thunder and I found this Ankylosaurus and decided to tame him. There were some raptors nearby, so I decided to tame them as well so that they wouldn't attack the Ankylosaurus. On day 84, I passed by where my raptor gang had died and I decided to pay my respects by putting up a sign for each lost soul. When I arrived back home, I decided to name the Ankylosaurus Spiky Boy. 
From days 85 to 86, I wanted to have a go at breeding. So I collected some resources to make some air conditioners and then I put my raptors in a little pen and enabled mating. So nothing did ever happen because they weren't like a mating pair. They didn't have like the heart above their name. But yeah, I was clueless at the time. I even believe that maybe the enclosure was a bit too small, so I put them in with the beetles. And when I put Iron Jaw in, basically he got cryo sickness, so I had to feed him stim berries. My plant pots were finally accomplished, so I removed all the ugly plumbing and the glass. The next day, I realized that French Joe was actually a female and Barry a male, and they were a mating pair, so I enabled the mating, and soon enough I had this lovely big green egg. I put some air conditioners around it, as well as torches, because it really needed a lot of heat for the incubation. On day 91, I went to see the fallen raptors, and then I decided in their memory to tame two more raptors. Day 92 was quite exciting because not one Bronto was born, but two, so I named one Baby Joe after the mum and the other Baby Barry after the dad. I gave them some food and I also went to collect some vegetables from the greenhouse and oh my had the plants grown. I then decided to bring the babies over to their mum and dad. For the next few days I decided I would tame a companion for Thunder. So I had found this lovely white Argentavis quite far from the trap, you know, I had lured him for quite some time and guess what Thunder did as soon as it hit me? He killed it. So it was time to repeat the process all over again. I made sure to stop Thunder from doing anything and here's what happened. And obviously, I had to name him Lightning. By day 95, the Brontos had grown quite a bit and no doubt they had eaten all the food I'd given them. I then released the raptors from the mating enclosure because anyway, they weren't mating and I cured Fang from cryosickness. I really loved how the plant pots looked in front of the house, so obviously I had to make a bunch more. And suddenly the front of my house became messy and ugly once again because I had to put like a bunch of pipes everywhere for the water. I then went to have a look at the baby Brontos and oh my, they were growing terribly fast. As the 100 days was slowly coming to an end, I decided to park all my dinos like in a relatively nice way to kind of show them off at the end. And when I bought the group of dodos, it was really hilarious how they were running towards me. That night, I realized that one of the Brontos wanted to go for a walk for imprinting, so that was very easy. But the other one wanted exceptional kibble. So obviously, I'd never done that, so I looked it up and I struggled for a bit to make some focal chili. All that to realize that I needed a large egg. So I went to see French Joe, and the egg she gave me was actually a poop. Finally, it was day 100. The Brontos had grown like crazy and I attained so many dinosaurs. But of course, I will never forget, it all started with Billy. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please tell me in the comments because this is the first time I did an art video on this channel and I would really like to know if you would like to see more videos on the game. Love you!